In this video, we'll explore the effect of temperature on chemical equilibrium. The particular system involves chloral complexes of copper II. To prepare the system, we simply dissolve anhydrous copper II chloride in acetone. The resulting solution has a dark yellow-green color, which is indicative of a dichlorocopper II complex. I'll place portions of this solution in some hot water on the left, and some acetone that's been chilled with dry ice on the right. The yellow-green dichlorocopper complex participates in several reactions with water and chloride ion. Some of these reactions are illustrated below. Notice that all of these reactions are endothermic as red from left to right and exothermic in the reverse direction. Endothermic reactions tend in the reverse direction toward reactants at lower temperatures. Thus, the dichlorocopper complex is converted to the green monochloral complex in the chilly dry ice acetone mixture. On the other hand, Endothermic reactions tend to be driven toward products at higher temperature. Thus, the dichlorocopper complex is converted to the yellow trichloral complex and orange tetrachloral complex in the hot water. Now let's explore how we can use this chemical system to generate a whole host of colors. To create yellow and green, we'll simply warm and cool the yellow-green dichlorocopper complex as I described previously. To generate a blue color, we'll just add some silver nitrate. To get an orange color, we'll add a little bit of table salt. Let's describe the effect of addition of silver nitrate first. The added silver ions precipitate out any chloride ions in the system. This chloride ion removal has the effect of shifting the equilibrium displayed above strongly to the left. This forms the free copper II ion, which is blue in color. The addition of salt to this flask increased chloride ion concentration. This shifts all equilibria displayed above to the right, favoring the formation of the orange tetrachlorocopper complex. So we see how we can use our knowledge of chemical equilibria to generate orange, yellow, yellow-green, green, and blue-colored solutions. In conclusion, let's take one more look at all of the chemical equilibrium equations that allowed us to generate these beautiful colors.